Okay, so as most of you are probably already know, President Trump has been suspended from Twitter. I see a lot of, suspended permanently. I see a lot of people, they're all happy. They're saying, yes, finally, they should have done it a long time ago. A lot of these people are very ignorant um, or disingenuous. Maybe both. But the reason why they said they suspended him permanently, and not only him, other people have been suspended as well, and Parler's having some issues now, and they're, they're, uh, they got taken down from the Google, Google Play Store until they comply, whatever that means. The reason why they said they suspended him was because they said that his words incited violence and that it might incite further violence. You know, now it was done under that guise. You know, the, the great irony of this is that I remember, you know, a lot of people uh, don't remember because they don't want to remember. The whole Black Lives Matter thing was going on and, you know, the country was being burned to the ground. Um, you had a lot of celebrities, a lot of politicians that were co-signing it and were fine with it and were basically, you know, they were saying very inflammatory things and uh, were actually kind of promoting what was going on. But yet none of them were taken down for inciting any sort of violence. So that's interesting. So it shows what's really going on. What they're really trying to do is basically silence any other opinion of other than known you know big tech is super leftists you know this was done in co coordination i have no doubt i have no doubt in my mind it was a coordinated effort by these leftist politicians and these companies as well to take down uh you know trump's twitter and other people too and basically what they're trying to do is they're con they're trying to control the information that's put out there they're trying to control the conversation they don't want anybody that has another opinion other than their own or anybody with any sort of power or influence other than what they think. That's exactly what's going on. So, you know, it's interesting that people are all happy about it and they're saying, oh, this is just a great thing, you know. But, you know, these people don't realize the danger in this, you know. What, what you're doing now is you're creating an echo chamber, an echo chamber of ideas and thoughts, right? Obviously, it's, from the, it's of the left, the way they think. You know, you talk about wanting to bring people together but how are you ever going to have bring people together if you can't even have a conversation anymore? If all of a sudden they say, "Oh, this is uh, you know hate speech," you know it's the same thing that they do when they call you a racist. You know they disqualify you from even having a conversation, even having an opinion. They call you a racist. They call you a sexist. They call you a bigot. Now the next step is, oh, what you were saying could potentially incite violence. You know, and that, I mean words are kind of open to interpretation to a certain degree, right? So you could say anything and, and they could say, oh, well, that, that was inciting violence, right? Because you don't want that, that side to have an opinion, you know? So, you know, and the whole thing is interesting, the, the, the whole incident at the Capitol, you know, it, it's who's telling the story, you know, the narrative that's, that's being um, put out there, you know, it's kind of funny because it's, they're acting like these people went in there armed because they're calling it a coup and an insurrection, which, I mean, it was a pretty shitty insurrection, pretty, pretty uh, lousy coup. Um, I've never heard of a coup or insurrection where people are wandering around a building aimlessly and taking selfies and acting like clowns. It doesn't sound like an insurrection or a coup to me. Um, so they're painting this as if they were burning down the place and they went in there and they stormed the place with firearms and they were shooting people and holding these politicians hostage. You know, which is not the case. You know, there was some violence, no doubt. You know, actually, a police officer got uh, killed. He got hit with a, um, I think, a fire extinguisher, you know, which is completely disgusting. I mean, that, that, that stuff like that should never happen. Again, I'm not condoning that whole situation. I just find it ironic the way people are being such hypocrites and so disingenuous about the situation. They had no problem when Black Lives Matter was burning down the country. They had no problem with any of that stuff. You know, and now all of a sudden, and they, they were they were talking about defund the police, and they were against the police and everything. And now all of a sudden, they're on the police side. Now all of a sudden, they're for law and order. Like I don't I don't understand that. You know, but it, it shows their uh, disingenuousness. You know, so basically, it's just you know, it's it's kind of scary where we're headed because we can't even have a conversation between two different sides now because now the other side, you know, the right is going to get silenced, and then also you know. Um, they won't be motivated to actually speak up because they're going to be scared, you know, to get blacklisted and stuff like that. You know, we're, we're headed to a very, very, very dangerous place, you know. You know, and I, lo I love this game they play, you know, people who think that they think they're really smart. They think they're very intelligent, right? They say, oh, well, it has nothing to do with freedom of speech because it's a private company. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, that's all good and fine. And that makes sense. I mean, Twitter has every right to do with that. You know, so does Facebook, right? Private companies. Okay, that makes sense. You know. But here's the thing. Let's say somebody owns a business 
and for whatever reason, they decide eh, they don't want to serve Asian people or they don't want to serve Hispanics or blacks or homosexuals. It's their private business, right? And they could say, I don't want to serve these people, right? That's okay, right? It's not, right? So you see, they talk out of both sides of their mouths. They want to have it both ways. Doesn't work that way. So, you know, it goes to show you more of their hypocrisy. You know, the left, the left is so tolerant of, of they want everyone to, you know, and talk about inclusion and, and uh, accepting people for who they are and everything and uh, what, how they feel. But, but then they don't want to have a conversation with anybody that thinks differently than, you, than them, you know? So, again, these people are hypocrites. Um, I don't see things getting uh, any better. I think it's going to get worse. You know, unfortunately, it seems like we might be headed towards some sort of a civil war, civil war, probably on a small scale, you know, and hopefully it is not. It's, it doesn't get too crazy, but things are not looking good, man. But, you know, the truth of the matter is, though, this was the left's wet dream, an incident like this. This was their like they were waiting for four years. They were waiting for something like this to happen. And it finally happened, which it didn't really happen on the scale that they would make you think that it happened. But they were waiting for something like this as an excuse as a reason to say, oh, look, I told you, I told you so, I told you so. You see, Trump's dangerous. His supporters are dangerous. They were waiting for this. And all this, Trump getting taken off Twitter and all these conservatives getting banned and everything and the silencing and everything, that was all a coordinated effort. And they used what happened as an excuse. They were just waiting for some sort of an excuse to do this. That's the bottom line. That's the truth. I mean, people, that you, if you don't think that you're in denial, if you don't think this is a con, uh, consorted effort, and everything wasn't coordinated. I mean, listen, man, you, you need to wake the hell up, man. Seriously. That's exactly what happened. This was all planned, you know? So they took advantage of an opportunity. You know, they say never let a crisis, a good crisis go to waste, right? And uh, that's that's basically why they did everything. Why why everything happened the way that it happened. Why, you, you know, you're seeing what you're seeing now, you know? And it's only going to get worse, you know? And, don't, and people are really naive. If you think that they're doing this to protect people and out of the goodness of their hearts... I mean, are, are you kidding me? Do people really believe that? They're trying to protect people? Really? Jesus. The left controls Hollywood. They control sports for the most part now. They control social media, right, through big tech. They got it all covered. And they're attempting to reprogram society. And people need to wake the hell up, man. They got to wake the hell up before it's too late. This is just indoctrination. It's just... They're trying to reprogram everybody. They're trying to indoctrinate everybody. Get, get them to think one way, only one voice. Yeah, think about it, man. Gotta think about it. It's just funny it. to me, though, because I remember when people were complaining about the $600 check and they were all upset about with these politicians. Oh, they're all crooks. They're all, all of them Democrats and Republicans. You know, this is, I, we hate these people. And everyone was all up in arms and upset. And then they went to the Capitol building and then everybody, they took this to the source of the, who they had an issue with. And now all of a sudden it's like, oh, you can't do that. You know, this, how could you do that? You know, it's sacred ground. You know, it's sacred, holy ground. And, you know, it's people are such hypocrites, man. I just I can't take it anymore. It's like I got to laugh, man, when I when I when I hear Black Lives Matter were mostly peaceful protests. And this whole Trump thing that happened were riots and an insurrection like that is such a la That's such a joke, man. Uh, such a joke. That's why I can't take these people serious. I never will. Again. I'm not condoning anything that happened at, you know, the Capitol building. But it's just funny to me that people are so outraged. They're so upset about what happened, right? About those people going in there. But at the same time, those people on Capitol Hill, the same people that steal your tax money, the same people that shut down your businesses, they took your jobs, they sold them overseas. You know, the same people that sent you or your sons or your daughters to go die and fight get maimed in overseas wars that have nothing to do with our own interests, nothing to do with, you know, the everyday American, right? But you're all so upset that they disrespected their, their holy ground. 